Kaladin charged up the broad stairs, followed by some fifty soldiers. Stormlight pulsed within him, lending a spring to each step. The Fused had taken time to come attack him on the Sunwalk, and had left soon after Shallan had created her ruse. He could only assume that the city assault was consuming the enemy's attention, which meant he might be able to use his powers without drawing immediate reprisal. Elikar led the way, brilliant shard blade carried in a two-handed grip. They twisted around at a landing and charged up another flight. Elikar didn't seem to care that each step took them farther from the bulk of their army. Sil, up the stairs. Check for an ambush on each floor. Yes, sir, Commander, sir. Radiant, sir. A moment later, she zipped back down. Lots of men on the third floor, but they're backing away from the stairwell. Doesn't look like an ambush. Kaladin nodded, then slowed Elikar with a touch on the arm. We have a reception waiting. Kaladin pointed at a squad of soldiers. It seems the king lost his guard somewhere. You're now them. If we get into combat, keep his majesty from being surrounded. He pointed at another group. You men are... Beard? Yes, Cal? Um, sir? Behind him were Noro, Ved, Alaward, and Vasilev, Kaladin's entire squad from the wall guard. Without the captain, we don't have a proper platoon leader. Figured we should stick with you. Beard nodded and rubbed at the glyph ward wrapping his right arm. Fortune, it read. Good to have you. Try to keep me from being flanked, but give me space if you can. Don't crowd you, and don't let anyone else crowd you either. Can do, sir. Kaladin looked to the king and nodded. The two of them took the last few steps up to the landing to emerge into a broad stone hallway, carpeted down the center, but otherwise unornamented. Sil was right. A platoon of enemy soldiers had formed up down the hall, holding halberds or crossbows, but seemed content to wait. Do you not see me? Do you not know your monarch? Are you so far consumed by the touch of the spren that you would kill your own king? Storms. These soldiers barely seem to be breathing. At first, they didn't move. Then a few looked backward down the hallway. Was that a voice? The palace soldiers immediately broke formation and retreated. Elikar set his jaw, then led the way after them. They finally reached the royal chambers, marked by a broad set of doors, open and inviting. Kaladin stopped his men 30 feet from the opening, near a corridor that split off to the left. There are soldiers down that smaller hallway to the left. There isn't a single one in the room ahead, but Kaladin, she's in there. The queen. I can hear her. That's her voice, singing. Kaladin arranged his remaining men. Half stayed back to watch their retreat, and the other half formed up at the left hallway to stare down the palace guard. If this went wrong, he'd have a bloodbath on his hands, with the king trapped in the middle. Still, this was why they'd come up here. He followed the queen's song and entered the room. The queen sat at a vanity beside the wall. She was much as Kaladin had anticipated, younger than Elikar, with long, dark Alethi hair, which she was combing. Aesidan? She looked away from the mirror, then smiled broadly. She had a narrow face with prim lips painted a deep red. She rose from the seat and glided to him. Husband! So it was you, I heard. You have returned at last? Victorious over our enemies, your father avenged? Yes. Elikar moved to step toward her, but Kaladin grabbed him by the shoulder and held him back. The queen focused on Kaladin. New bodyguard, dear one? Far too scruffy. You should have consulted me. You have an image to maintain. Where is Gav, Isidan? Where is my son? He's playing with friends. Elikar looked to Kaladin and gestured to the side with his chin. Keep alert. Kaladin began picking through the room. He passed the remnants of lavish meals only partially eaten. Pieces of fruit, each with a single bite taken out of them. Cakes and pastries, candied meats on sticks. It looked like it should have rotted, based on the decay spren, he noticed but it hadn't. Dear one, we heard that the city has seen trouble lately. One of my Ardens tried to refound the hierocracy. We really should keep better watch on who joins them. Not every man or woman is proper for service. You had her executed. Of course. She tried to overthrow us. Kaladin picked around a pile of musical instruments of the finest wood, sitting in a heap. Kaladin, across the room. Behind the dressing screen. He passed the balcony to his left. If he remembered right, 
Though the story had been told so often, he had heard a dozen differing versions. Gavilar and the assassin had fallen off that ledge during their struggles. Asadan, you're not well. Please, come with me. Not well? There's an evil influence in the palace. Evil? Husband, what a fool you are at times. Kaladin joined Syl and glanced behind the dressing screen, which had been pushed back against the wall to section off a small cubby. Here, a child, two or three years old, huddled clutching a stuffed soldier. <laughs> Several spren with soft red glows were picking at him like kremlings at a corpse. The boy tried to turn his head, and the spren pulled on the back of his hair until he looked up, while others hovered in front of his face and took horrified shapes like horses with melting faces. Kaladin reacted with a swift, immediate rage. He seized the sill blade from the air, forming a small dagger from mist. He drove the dagger forward and caught one of the spren, pinning it to the wall's wooden panel. He had never known a shard blade to cut to spren before, but this worked. A hundred hands came from its shape and scraped at the blade at the wall until it seemed to rip into a thousand tiny pieces, then fade. The other three red spren streaked away in panic. In his hands, Kaladin felt Syl tremble. He released her, and she took the shape of a small woman. That was... that was terrible. Did we just... Kill a spread? The thing deserved it. Syl just huddled on his shoulder, wrapping her arms around herself. <laughs> the child was dressed in a little uniform. Oh, Elokar, you were ever so oblivious. Your father had grand plans, but you... All you ever wanted to do was sit in his shadow. It was for the best that you went off to play war. So you could stay here and... And do this? I continued your father's work. I found the secret, Elikar. Spren. Agent Spren. You can bond with them. Bond? Have you seen my radiance? The Queen's Guard? I've done what your father could not. Oh, he found one of the ancient Sprens, but he could never discover how to bond it. But I... I have solved the riddle. In the dim light of the royal chambers, Asadon's eyes glittered then started to glow a deep red. Storms. Time to go. Kaladin reached down to try to pick up the child, but the boy scrambled away from him. That finally drew the king's attention. Elikar rushed over, throwing aside the dressing screen. Gav! He knelt beside his son. The child, Gavinor, scooted away from his father. Kaladin looked back to the queen. How long have you been planning this? Planning for my husband's return? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the thing behind you. <laughs> Yelignar serves me. Or do you speak of the heart of the revel? Ashert Marn has no will. He is merely a force of consumption, mindless, to be harnessed. It's okay, my son. I am here. I will not leave you again. The child looked up, blinked away tears, and finally let his father pick him up. Alakar cradled the child, who in turn clutched his stuffed soldier. It wore blue armor. Out. But, Elikar, be a hero to the one you can save. The king met his eyes, then nodded, clutching the young child. He started toward the door, and Kaladin followed, keeping his eyes on the queen. <sighs> I feared this. Out! They rejoined their soldiers, then began to retreat down the hallway. Asadon stopped in the doorway to the king's chambers. I have outgrown you, Elikar! I have taken the gemstone into me and have harnessed Yelignar's power! Something started to twist around her. A black smoke, blown as if from an unseen wind. Double time! Kaladin drew in Stormlight. He could feel it coming. He sensed where this would go the moment they'd started up the steps. Kill them! Kaladin's men charged down the steps in their escape, though the back ranks bunched up in the hallway around the stairwell. Behind the Queen's guard set up and lowered crossbows. Silspear held high. Kaladin stepped between the two groups and pulled Stormlight into the ground, drawing the bolts downward. He was unpracticed with his power, and unfortunately, some of the bolts still slammed into shields, even heads. <laughs> Kaladin drew in a deep breath of stormlight, bursting a light, the glow of his skin shining on the walls and ceiling of the palace hallway. The queen's soldiers shied back before the light as if it were something physical. He lashed himself in precisely the right way to rise a few feet off the ground and float there. 
The Queen's soldiers blinked against the light as if it were somehow too strong for their eyes. At last, the rest of Kaladin's men rushed down the stairs. Only Noro's squad lingered. Some of the Queen's soldiers began to test forward at him, so he dropped to the floor and started down the steps at a run. Beard and the rest of the squad joined him, followed by the Queen's soldiers. Unfortunately, Kaladin heard something else echoing up the stairwell from down below. The sounds of men clashing. Rear guard! Form up on the steps! Orient toward the upper floor! His soldiers obeyed, turning and leveling spears and shields at the descending enemy. Kaladin lashed himself upward and twisted so that he hit the ceiling feet first. He ducked and ran, passing over the heads of his men on the high stairwell until he reached the ground floor. The first ranks of his soldiers clashed with Parchman troops in the eastern gallery. But the enemy had penned them into the stairwell, so most of his troops couldn't get down to the fight. Kaladin released his lashing, dropping and twisting to land in a tempest of light before the Parchman ranks. Kaladin felt his rage flare, and he lowered the sill spear. It was time to begin the work of death. Then, he saw the face of the Parshman in front of him. It was Sa, former slave, card player, father, Kaladin's friend. Kaladin's will to fight evaporated. He'd been stoked with energy, ready to enter the battle and protect his men, but Sa recognized him, then grabbed his companion, Ken, one of the others Kaladin knew and pointed. Storms! The group of them scrambled away from the steps, leaving dead human soldiers. In the opening provided, Kaladin's men pushed down off the steps into the Grand Hall. They surged around Kaladin as, stunned, he lowered his spear. The large, pillared hall became a scene of utter chaos. Azor's soldiers rushed in from the Sunwalk, meeting the parchment who came up the stairs from the back of the palace. They likely broken in through the gardens there. The king held his son, standing amid a group of soldiers in the very center. Kaladin's men managed to get down off the steps, and behind them rushed the queen's guard. It all churned into a melee. Battle lines disintegrated, and platoons shattered, men fighting alone or in pairs. It was a battlefield commander's nightmare. Kaladin saw them, all of them. Sa and the Parshmen, fighting to keep their freedom. The guardsmen who had been rescued, fighting for the king. Azor's wall guard terrified as their city fell around them. The Queen's guard, convinced they were loyally following orders. In that moment, Kaladin lost something precious. He'd always been able to trick himself into seeing a battle as us against them. Protect those you love. Kill everyone else. But... but they don't deserve death. None of them do. He locked up. He froze. Something that hadn't happened to him since his first days in Amaram's armor. The sill spear vanished in his fingers, puffing to mist. How could he fight? How could he kill people who were just doing the best they could? Stop! Stop it! Stop killing each other! Nearby Sa rammed Beard through with a spear. Stop! Please! Ahead, Elikar's ring of guards fell, and a member of the Queen's Guard managed to ram the point of a halberd into the King's arm. Elikar dropped his shard blade from pained fingers, holding his son close with his other arm. The Queen's Guardsmen pulled back, eyes widening, as if seeing the King for the first time. One of Azor's soldiers cut the Guardsmen down in his moment of confusion. Please stop! Please, just listen to me! Stop! They couldn't hear him. Sa, gentle Sa, who had only wanted to protect his daughter, died by Noro's sword. Noro, in turn, got his head split by Ken's axe. Noro and Sa fell beside Beard, whose dead eyes stared sightlessly. His arms stretched out, Glyph Ward soaking up his blood. Kaladin slumped to his knees. His stormlight seemed to frighten off the enemies. Everyone stayed away from him. Sill spun around him. Please, Kaladin! Please, get up! You have to get up! King, get, get to Elikar. Elikar had fallen on his knees. In one arm, he held his terrified son. In the other hand, he held a sheet of paper. A sketch? Kaladin could almost hear Elikar stuttering the words. Life. Life before death. The hair on Kaladin's neck rose. Elikar started to glow softly. Strength. 
before weakness. Do it, Elika. Journey. Journey before. A figure emerged from the battle. A tall, lean man. So, so familiar. Gloom seemed to cling to Moash, who wore a brown uniform like the Parchman. For a heartbeat, the battle pivoted on him. Wall guard behind him, broken palace guard before. Moash. No. Kaladin couldn't move. Stormlight led from him, leaving him empty, exhausted. Lowering his spear, Moash ran Alakar through the chest. <coughs> Moash pinned the king to the ground, shoving aside the weeping child prince with his foot. He placed his boot against Alakar's throat, holding him down, then pulled the spear out and stabbed Alakar through the eye as well. He held the weapon in place, carefully waiting until the fledgling glow around the king faded and flickered out. The king's shard blade appeared from mist and clanged to the ground beside him. Alakar, king of Alakar, was dead. Moash pulled the spear free and glanced at the shard blade. Then he kicked it aside. He looked at Kaladin, then made the bridge for salute. Wrists tapped together. The spear he held dripped with Elikar's blood.